After a long but fruitful work week, you took a bunch of your friends and went to one of your favorite bars. As you're about to order the drinks, a strange person walks into the bar. It is none other than Mr. Bill Gates himself. Pause here. Now, if I have to ask you, what happens to the average wealth of that bar as soon as Mr. Bill Gates walked in, we would all have to say it would shoot up massively. And that is the problem with averages. Averages tend to get pulled in either direction depending on how extreme one or few of the values are. So in this video, let's understand how to use averages, medians and other statistical calculations, what they mean and how to calculate them in Excel. Let's go. Let's start with average or mean. Average is nothing but sum of values divided by count of values. So imagine you have three values, 10, 20 and 30. The average of this group would be all the numbers together, that is 60, divided by 3, so 20. Now see what happens with the Bill Gates scenario. Same numbers, now we throw in a really large number like 400. The total of this group becomes 460. Count of the group becomes 4, so the average becomes 115. Such a massive jump between 20 to 150. But because they can kind of change a lot depending on how high or low one of the values or some of the values is, they don't really present a full picture of the data. So anytime you're using averages as a proxy for explaining what's happening in the data, keep this in the mind. If your data has some Bill Gates, then you want to be really careful. How do we calculate these averages in Excel? We can use the average function in Excel, but Excel also has many other functions that can do the average. Starting with average ifs, which can be used to calculate average based on conditions. We have got trim mean to calculate average by excluding top and bottom values. And then we also have subtotal to calculate average for the values that are currently filtered on the screen. Now let's talk about median. Median refers to the midpoint of the data. So if you take all your data, arrange it in ascending or descending order, the middle point is your median. Going back to our example of 10, 20, 30, the median here is 20. So this is kind of same as the average. But now see what happens with the Bill Gates scenario. 10, 20, 30, and then 400. In this case, our median is, since the data has no middle point, there are even number of values, we take the middle two points and average them out. So the median becomes 25. Whereas on the other hand, the average of this group is 115. So you see that there is not so much movement in the median because the middle is still there. Well, there are some extreme values, they are on either sides of the data. So or median doesn't get pulled by that much. So this is one of the critical differences between average and median. A median tends to be a better explainer of the data in many situations. I'm not altogether discounting averages, but whenever you are calculating average, try to also calculate median and then see if both of them are around the same point. Another way to think about median is, a median tells you the point from which half of your data lies on either side. So if I take 25 or 20 in this case, half of my data is on this side of the value, half of it is on the other side of the value. And we can use the median function in Excel to calculate these median values. While staying on the topic of median and midpoint, another important statistic that we calculate is the quartile. A quartile is kind of like median. So I'm going to quickly explain this to you. Imagine you have a bunch of values. So then the median would be the middle point because it's kind of like bang in the middle. Whereas a quartile is instead of cutting the box into two halves, we are cutting it into four chunks, four quarters. 
hence the name quartile. So we have got quartiles like this. This is called first quartile. This is called third quartile. And the middle one is called second quartile. So another name for median is the second quartile because it's kind of exactly in the middle. The first quartile tells us the data point at which 25, the bottom one fourth of the values lie on this side and the top three fourth values lie on that side. So many times when you're calculating median or average, it's a good idea to calculate where the first quartile and the third quartile are because that can tell you a better story about your data. And we can use the quartile functions in Excel to calculate these things as well as there is a percentile function in Excel that can be used to calculate any percent of values, not just 25 or 75. Now that you have understood how to do average, median and quartile, you might be tempted to use them all the time. But here is a simple rule. Try to see the data, try to show the data. What this means is many times when you use these averages or medians, they tend to not tell the full story about your data. So it's a good idea to see the data in a graphical format, then you can quickly see where some of these extreme values are, how the values are spread. For example, if I just don't see the data, I'm only looking at averages and I have got two groups of people. Let's just say this A and B. Group A average is 25 and group B average is also 25. We might simply think they both have similar type of values because the average is 25. But that's not true. Let's take a look at the data. Group A has four values, 10, 20, 30, and 40. Total is 100, average is 25. Group B on the other hand has three zeros and one 100. So that average is also 25. If you don't see these values and you're just looking at the average, you might be tempted to conclude that they are kind of similar groups. So this is where uh, don't just look at the overall pictures like average and median or quartiles. Always try to look at the data as well because that can expose some of these abnormalities that are going on in your business data. I hope you found this information quite helpful. If you want to learn a little bit more of how to put this into practice, what formulas or what techniques in Excel we can use to analyze the data like this, check out this video where I talk more about how to take this approach and analyze a business data set. I'll catch you there. And if you're still in the bar having the drink with Bill Gates, say hello to him.